Hello, this is Oliver Garden, Dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine here at LSU. It's another edition of 3Q with Oliver, an intermittent uh, introduction to everything that we do here at the school by interviewing members of our community who embrace our values of innovation, compassion and integrity. With me here today is our Associate Dean for Educational Strategy and an equine internist, Dr. Heidi Bansey. So welcome Heidi, it's good to have you with us. I'm going to ask you three questions that are germane to your field of uh, building and uh, re-envisioning our curriculum, which is a really exciting initiative that we're un unfolding and unrolling, rolling out in fact in the fall of this year. So Heidi, you're one of the thought leaders actually in the nation, in the world perhaps, on curriculum redesign and on competency-based veterinary education and backward design of curricula, which is uh, the opposite of the traditional paradigm of the presenter saying what's important, therefore I'm going to deliver this much versus what do I need for a day one graduate. Tell us how your leadership and the organizations that you're involved in on a global level inform curricula redesign right here, right now at LSU VetMed. Sure. So it's a very exciting time to be part of veterinary education. There's so much on the go right now um, with regards to educational developments. And I think one of the things that's really important for me and as we develop this curriculum is to make sure that we are outcomes based and doing the best job that we can to prepare our graduates. And being part of organizations such as the Council on Outcomes-Based Veterinary Education allows me to be at the cutting edge of knowing what's going on Absolutely. in the field, yeah. which we can then readily implement here at our home institution. The other advantage to that is just the, simply the networking opportunities that come from being involved in these organizations and being able to reach out to colleagues and pick their brains about how they've approached this and make sure that we're taking the best from what, what everyone is doing and trying to implement that here. So speaking about the workforce and day one readiness, what is it about the new curriculum, and there's plenty, we could talk about this for two hours, that prepares our LSU Vet Med graduates for day one readiness. Why are they so ready to be great? Well, actually anything in the veterinary profession, but especially practitioners who are empathetic, compassionate, practically savvy and book smart. Sure. So one of the big focuses of our curriculum as a competency-based curriculum is to, to make sure we're a, a, attending to all of the outcomes and, and what a veterinarian looks like in practice and not focusing so much on the knowledge base, which historically in traditional curriculum was really where a, a bulk of the contact time was focused was on that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So in our new curriculum, we have interwoven professional skills, which includes communication, making sure students have time to practice not only normal conversations taking histories from clients but also some of those more difficult conversations before they get on the clinic floor. Same thing with clinical skills, making sure they, they get to do physical exams and practice those physical exams and other key practical skills so that they're ready to do the procedures including surgical procedures upon graduation. So focusing on all the aspects of being a veterinarian, not just the knowledge aspect. And along with that, we're trying to really focus the knowledge portion of our curriculum and integrate that into reasoning. So students are taking that knowledge and immediately applying it to cases and thinking how, how they would approach this case, either diagnostically or therapeutically, um, to try to come to, to the best outcome for that patient. Yeah, it sounds really exciting to me. I, I almost wish I could reboot my own uh, training because I'm sure it would have been much more day one ready than, than, uh, than what I had 30 years ago. So we are poised, ready to roll out the new curriculum. It's coming this fall, this year, 2023, which, is, which could not be more exciting. I'm thrilled. What's next? How are we preparing our faculty and staff, our whole community to embrace this new vision and to be ready for a completely new paradigm of teaching? Sure. So we've been engaged in some substantial faculty development efforts to help our faculty be more prepared um, for a different style of teaching, really focusing on interactive methods to engage the learners. So we've offered a series of workshops and fortunately we have two um, faculty that are now trained in veterinary education uh, from the Royal Veterinary College that have helped lead those efforts mm -hmm. and support our faculty in that dimension um, we are also working on now planning 
our year two of our curriculum to follow up on this, this year one and working on continued integration of the different, different threads that are currently in our curriculum to, to have a curriculum that's scaffolded um, from year to year to prepare yeah, our graduates. Fantastic. And, and obviously we all recognize that we need to build not only the physical capacity in new facilities, but also the, the most important ingredient, of course, is always people. Can you tell us a little bit about how your office and uh, team are expanding to accommodate all of the needs of this wonderful new curriculum? Sure. Uh, so our office is growing in all directions. <laughs> So we're very excited. We just hired a new assistant professor of veterinary practice skills that will help us substantially in teaching our, our clinical skills, so procedural and surgical skills in our curriculum. We have just hired a new director of clinical skills that will oversee that procedural skills aspect mm -hmm. of our curriculum, including new model development and really guide that process forward. Mm -hmm. We are also hiring on a new instructional designer to help faculty from a session, session to session level in preparing those sessions to make sure that there's efficient use of contact time with the students right. um, and, and doing that in a fashion that, that makes sense for the students. Uh, we are also hiring an assistant professor of curricular analytics, which we're super excited about because we're mm -hmm. generating a lot of data now throughout our curriculum um, that we need to be able to, to look at and make sure that we're reaching those outcomes that we desire. Absolutely. So they'll play a huge role in looking at some of the data that we're currently Indeed, indeed. And any other final thoughts from you? I, I know your career has sort of reached an inflection point where you are focusing more on pedagogy and leading uh, curricular matters, which I think is awesome. I mean, we need more veterinary educators in the world, let's be honest. How have you embraced that change? Because you trained as an equine internist, you're now very much still that, but also now embracing and uh, leading curricular redesign and educational initiatives. Sure, so I would say that um, my initial experience at the University of Calgary, where I was first hired on, was really um, instrumental in, in showing me what a competency-based curriculum, a, a student-centered curriculum could look like. Mm. And then coming here, um, I really just sought the opportunity to create a community of educators so we could get together and talk. There were excellent teachers here, but people were in silos. Uh, and I really wanted to work to make sure that people were, were embracing education and their role as educators mm -hmm. when I arrived. Right. And from there, it just continued to grow. Opportunities continued to arise yes. um, and just kept headed down that path until the amazing opportunity to take on this role a year and a half ago came about. So oh, great. Um, very grateful for this We're opportunity. Thrilled to have you in the role. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.